Step three is to decide if there are any values that we could set a default value for. And what this is when the database, if it's not given a value for this particular attribute or this particular um, value in the column, it will automatically put the default value. So you don't want a default value on any of your identities or you know these identities for sure not because those are auto-generated. And even and for most of your, there's many that won't have default values. So user ID won't have a default. Certainly we don't have default names or passwords. User type is a possibility. So we can think about, uh, you know, we have, we have students, we have instructors, we have administrators, and then we have the combinations of those. And so we could really consider that, you know, of all of the users of this system, the, the majority of them are students. So we could go ahead and put a default value of S here to represent the student. There's not a default department or major, GPA or class standing. And again, no phone number, no user ID. Notice how you just go through each of these and see if there was a reasonable default value for any of these. Who would like to set a default grade, right? <clears throat> we could each pick our own favorite default grade. Section number, instructor, course, semester, year, building, room number. None of those make are, will work for default values. Uh, course ID, course number, department, title, description, credits. Now let's think about credit. So is there one, do courses have a default course number or credit number? So you might say, no, they really, they do vary. But if in fact the university had a really standard, most of their courses are this many credits, then you could put that here. And let's go ahead and use the one that fits the School of Computing, and that is most of our courses are four credit courses. And so we could put that as the default value. So there we came up with a couple that could have default values.